if you were to yep. pick one spot in Botany Bay that you could say to somebody, right, if you head there with a box of lures, you're going to catch some fish, where would that spot be? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start in the northern end. So the Cooks River comes out adjacent to Sydney Airport. Yep. It's only a small waterway, but there's two rock break walls, a northern one and a southern one. There's not a lot of room for a lot of anglers there. So during the winter months, it doesn't get as crowded as what it does during the summer months. You get out there early, you'll get a spot, and you could cast metal out okay. for tailor salmon. Once the sun's come up and it's over the horizon a bit, tail will tend to go off. You could then change over to blades. You could throw blades out and you could hop them along the bottom, say for your brim and your flathead, and then... You could use some soft plastics out there as well. It's not a place that I would go out and use hard body lures, but if I was in a boat and there was no one fishing there, that would be a different thing. I would cast up and work your way along the break wall. Okay, So, and first thing in the morning, so before sunrise until the sun starts to get up a little bit higher, tailor of the go. Tell us about these medals that you'd be throwing, mate, what size and, and that sort of thing. You don't have to cast far there, so... Your little 30 gram to 40 gram metals, pick a brand. Doesn't have to be a really expensive one. I have used before, I got a barrel sinker. Yep. And I've painted it white, put the line through the middle, put a bead on the end, and then tied a treble on it. And that does the job as well. So, mate, what's the strategy? You head along the rock wall, you're looking for you know, signs of fish on the surface, or are you just methodically working the area over, casting out? letting it sink and then cranking it back. So I'll do what I call a fan cast in an umbrella shape and move around. But the thing is that if you've got other people there... You might have to stay in one spot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you work those areas. I found that if I'm there by myself, sometimes it's a bit harder to get the fish to stay on the bite. But if I'm there with, say, three or four other people and we all are getting fish, they then tend to spew up a bit of the white bait and the baits that they've been chasing and eating, and that's why they're there, because they're feeding on that. And that kind of creates a bit of a burly, and then that'll keep them going. The other thing I find that they won't stay around once that sun comes up, and the speed of the retrieve is not as fast as what I would retrieve it for a bonito. I find that the retrieve is fairly quick, chasing the tailor, it's enough to allow it not to sink, right? but to just stay in the zone at the top. And you might find that they're feeding on the top. They might find that they're feeding a metre under the water. But so it's just a matter of prospecting, not only in a, a fan fashion on top of the water, but to also try the different depth. And you might have to just count it down, two seconds, three seconds, or do it five seconds. They might be right down near the bottom. Right, let's move on to these blades and soft plastics now, mate. So target species for those, brim, flathead, yeah? Brim, flathead, whiting. You will pick tailor up if they're still there. You'll pick tailor up salmon. Flounder, you'll get there as well. So those one eight to quarter ounce blades, I use the TT1s. The switch blades? Yeah, I use those. And look, people have asked me what colour do I use? The gold colours I tend to like Okay. in the switchblades, stuff like golden boy, gold noggins. And then it's just a matter of, once again, bearing the speed of the hop rather than doing a big violent jerking up in the air. It might be just a slow lift that you do. I find that when people are using blades, so what I find is that they use them too quick. They need to slow it down. We have a lot of people coming into the shop and they say, oh, we've never caught anything on a blade. And I said, oh, okay, here's a rod. Pretend there's a blade on it. You show me in the shop what you do. And they throw it out, and then they retrieve it like they're chasing Yeah, <laughs> It's not what they're designed to do. All right, and the soft plastics, same species and same techniques as a blade? The soft plastics, one of the techniques that I like, I call dead sticking. So I will put on a quarter-ounce jig head. I'll put a three-inch soft plastic or maybe a four-inch soft plastic, belt it out as far as I can, let it sit to the bottom, and then just wait. And I might wait 10, 15 seconds, and then I'll just give it a little slight hop, and then I'll wait 10 seconds, and then I'll just give it a little slight hop. And I mean, it's only moving 
six inches, maybe a foot off yeah, the bottom. They sit there. Mm. Flat head are a different thing. Flat head will just, I've seen flat head go two metres across the bottom, chasing the plastic in clear water and then engulf it. But then other times you could drop a plastic on a flat head's head and it'll go, I don't yeah. want anything to do with that. Yeah, yeah frustrating. a different thing again. Whiting, I tend to use the really small, you know, the two-inch plastics, curled with some fork tails, some worms, that type of stuff. Yep. But then you could, if that doesn't work, just try your, your normal lift the rod up the full length, the seven-foot rod. Yep. Lift it up the full length, drop it back down the bottom and just slowly hop it across. Once yes. again, I find slow works better.